Early writings from the 7th and 8th century refer to a house of prayer and maybe a tower, but these don't seem to describe a dome. The earliest reference to a dome on the Temple Mount is from the 9th century. The anomalies are stacking up. In the last couple of episodes, we laid out a number of arguments for the claim that those inscriptions are not a 7th century inscription, rather they are a later one, and the argument is that they are possibly a 16th century uh, inscriptions. Of course, with us here virtually, uh, our dear friend Mel. Mel, again, uh, welcome, and thank you so much for being here, taking the time to do so. And, uh, uh, you know, we're so thankful for this research that you brought up to our attention by A.G. Deuce. So walk us through now uh, the continuation of Deuce's argument. Uh, what are we going to cover today? Okay, so in today's episode, we're going to be looking at when is our earliest reference to a Dome of the Rock. Um, why it matters is because if it didn't exist in the 7th century, how can there be an inscription claiming Abdul Malik built it? Right. Um, AJ Juice basically gives us a, a, some de details about the inscription, the one that's especially important in terms of Abdel Malik, which is that it was, it says that it was built in AH72, which would be 691, 692 CE, but the name got replaced by the Abbasid Caliph Al Mamun, which would have been 813, 833. Now, um, this inscription that we're referring to is part of a 20-meter inscription, which is on the inner arcade. Now, I have a diagram here to give you an idea of what we're talking about. It is often confused with the inner drum. So if you imagine underneath the dome, there's a circular area supporting the, the, uh, the dome. That's not where this inscription is. It's further out. It's called the arcade. It's octagonal. And... It's on both sides of that arcade. So if you look at the image on the right, you see the star. That's where you find it. It's above the archways. Okay. Right. Now, Sophronius doesn't say that the Saracens built their prayer hall over the foundation rock. This is something that I overlooked when I read the, um, the reference to uh, the um, mosque in the 7th century. He says the god of Saracens entered the holy city of Christ our Lord, Jerusalem, and immediately proceeded in haste to the place which is called the capital. They took with them men, some by force, others by their own will, in order to clean that place and to build that cursed thing intended for their prayer, which they call a mosque. Now, according to A.J. Juice, he says that there is no primary evidence that puts a building over the foundation stone. We could read that and assume that it's over the foundation stone, which is where the Dome of the Rock is located but that isn't what Sophronius actually says. Now, if we look to Arkulf, who visited Jerusalem sometime later, what he says is that in that famous place where once stood the magnificently constructed temple near the Eastern Wall, emphasis on the Eastern Wall, the Saracens now frequent a rectangular house of prayer, which they have built in a crude manner, constructing it from raised planks and large beams over some remains of ruins. This house as it is said, can accommodate at least 3,000 people. Now, according to A.J. Juice, if you look at the image on the right, where the red rectangle is, that's where he believes this would be located, which is next to the Eastern Gate. And it would be per perpendicular to the rock. Okay. Um, he says that it can be inferred that the dome was neither standing nor under construction during the 670s. There's nothing controversial about that. The original prayer house in Jerusalem that had been built in the 630s was enlarged and used by the Saracens on top of Roman ruins. So, so far, that's where they had a building, and we haven't reached the time of Abdul Malik yet. So are there any archaeological finds that support this, this existence of uh, the ruins of a mosque, for instance, or Roman ruins in there? That's a good question. It's not something that A.J. Juice has dealt with. He is uh, basically using literary sources to um, argue the case for the location of these different buildings. 
I think because of all the subsequent work, it might be difficult to establish, but it's not something he has dealt with. Okay. So Anastasia Seneta says nothing about the Dome of the Rock. Um, he is from the 690s. He attests to large-scale construction activities on the Temple Mount under Al-Malik. So that might suggest that it's in relation to the Dome of the Rock. Several milestones between Damascus and Jerusalem, as well as temple iconography and pre-reform coins, indicate that the Holy City and the Temple Mount were indeed part of large-scale infrastructure projects, but nothing is said about the Dome of the Rock. This is followed by the Quran's mentioning of the Sufyanid and Marwanid monuments that can be circumambulated. He makes the argument that the, these uh, Safa and Marwa are two monuments on the Temple Mount, which is a different argument to what Paul Ellis would, would say, which is that there are the two hills in Jerusalem called Safa and Marwa. But in any case, he's suggesting here that we can't read too much into this source. It doesn't mention Dome of the Rock yet. Now, he also speculates that perhaps that instead of a dome, a tower existed over the rock. Um, he gets this from a Umaid Codex of Sana, where there are designs of a tower that appears to be accessible through an elevated platform with stairs. So you can see the image on the left. The only problem is that this doesn't have any arcades, and the arcades are essential for the inscriptions. So without the arcades, there are no inscriptions. And so therefore, if this is all that's there, the inscriptions must come from later. So essentially, this is what it would have looked like if he's correct in assuming that this building is on the Temple Mount. Again, I would say, um, take this with a pinch of salt. It, this is an assumption he's making based on the Sana manuscript that this must only be in the Temple Mount. This building could refer to a building elsewhere. Um, now, when an illustrated Bible from the 8th century, which was from the court school of Charman, Charman depicted Zachariah at the temple. Was this how it depicted the temple? Well, this is how you'd, you'd think the picture would have depicted it. But instead, it's depicted like this, which is a tower with a, a slight dome on it, but no arcades. Um, I think it's quite logical to say that maybe the painters would have based their idea of the temple on what pilgrims would have seen in Jerusalem at that time, which would have been some form of a tower. So I think A.J. Juice's case here is a good one. Um, does this give us evidence for inscriptions in the 7th century? No, this would pretty much go against that. If this is all that exists, there's no arcade there. There is therefore no inscriptions. So that is a problem. The Zuckin Chronicle from the 8th century says that he turned the temple into a mosque because the little that remained of Solomon's temple became a mosque for the Arabs. He repaired the ruins of Jerusalem. He's referring to Al-Mansur, who was the caliph from 754 to 775. So if, if our idea of the Dome of the Rock is correct and there was an inscription there, then this goes against it. Um, it should have been a mosque prior to this, but he, according to so the Zuckin Chronicle, it hadn't yet been turned into a, a, a mosque. Um, he also says the following, uh, a traveler, Bernard the monk, visited the holy city around 870, and according to him, the Temple of Solomon is in the north, which houses a Saracen synagogue. Now, it's not clear, does he mean the north of where he's, he is, or does he mean the north of the Temple Mount? A.J. Juice has assumed that it means the north of the Temple Mount. If so, that would be evidence against the idea of the Dome of the Rock, because the Dome of the Rock would be in the centre there, rather than in the northern part. Um, and uh, where did the tower go? Well, A.J. Juice reckons that it could have been raised, and so this is a new building again in the, um, the 870s. Now, not long after that, we have our very first mention of the Dome of the Rock, and it's in the late 9th century, and the Sunni historian geographer Yakubi um, says that Abdul um, al-Malik built above the Sakra a dome. Um, now, the, the problem with all of that is that the, all the evidence beforehand would contradict it. Why is this the earliest reference to the Dome of the Rock? It 
AJ Juice would argue that the reason why they have this narrative is because the Dome of the Rock had recently been built since that monk has had visited in the 870, and this is essentially a backstory. Um, so a, a very late contemporary evidence that a building now covers the rock. It is the first contemporary primary evidence that a building now covers the rock and that the efforts in forming communal memory was focused on attributing the structure to Al-Malik that could only have stood for a few decades at the most. Um, so in short, the first prototype of the Dome of the Rock was built between 870 and 897, precisely when tradition starts creating a new communal memory. Therefore, neither Abdul al-Malik's dedicatory inscription nor al-Mamun's correction could have existed before that time. So that's a quick summary of why A.J. Dukes believes that the Dome of the Rock couldn't have existed before the ninth century. Yeah, and I was going to ask to about uh, uh, the Abdul Malik and his son al Ma'mun, and, and you just mentioned it here. So, so it seemed like uh, there are contradictions, as always. What a surprise uh, when it comes <laughs> to uh, that particular location, datings, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, what should we expect next time? So, um, in I can't, I'll have to. Can we, can we edit this bit, bit out because I can't remember? <laughs> Do you mind if I, oh, that, that's okay. Uh, uh, I mean, so uh, yeah. we're basically going to continue then uh, with the, the same uh, argument. And, and all of this is based on A.G. Deuce's uh, article. Is that correct? It is, yeah. Um, I've um, brought in tiny little bits of extra evidence here and there, but it's mostly A.J. Deuce's paper. Um, so the case in, in, in the next episode is we're going to argue that um, why the inscriptions couldn't have lasted, even if they existed even now in, you know, when the Dome of the Rock was built, why it wouldn't have survived because of all of the mishaps that happened over the centuries, including earthquakes and fires and so forth. So that's what we'll be looking at in the next episode. Wonderful. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone. This is Al Fadi, over and out. God bless. Take care. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.